morning and we welcome everybody here on the live stream, Facebook live stream. And of course, this is our month of prayer and fasting. And uh, I have uh, with me a special guest today. I have um, Sam Smith. And Sam is from the UK, from the United Kingdom. Hi, Sam. Glad Hi, to have yeah. you here. Yeah, it's good to be here. It's an honor. And uh, we want to encourage young people also to add themselves to this prayer and fasting. Mm -hmm. As we pray and fast, uh, we should have all the generations involved in that because there's very much that we have to um, put before the Lord as mm -hmm. we're going through this fast. Right now we're doing the... Um, well, you, depending on which one you're doing, you could be doing an Esther fast, which is three days with just liquids. You could be doing the Daniel fast, which is 21 days with no um, meat, no sweets. Or you could be fasting media. Um, you could be doing a million different things. And you know what? Fasting and prayer is definitely an individual thing. It's something that you individually choose to do. And it should not be legislated, <clears throat> but it's always good to do corporate uh, prayer and fasting and that's what we do in January each year. We've been doing this for a lot of years and we've really seen the results uh, from the prayer and fasting and I believe that the UK also yeah, joins us. Michael. Do you join us? Yeah, yeah and uh, not just Michael but the whole church joins in. Yeah, so they're joining us and uh, by the way, it's good to see everyone. I see your mother on there. Yeah, uh, she's there. Morning, Pastor Jane and uh, she's watching her little son here amen so that's great well the books we're using of course you all know is praying god's word praying god's word is a great book pray the word of god yeah. word of god never returns void amen. and then the other one we're using is fasting for breakthrough and revival uh which is a great one uh to read during a fast because i'll tell you what during a fast i find that i need the encouragement to keep going mm -hmm. and these books really encourage me uh, to keep going. But I did want to also mention to you that this month I'm reading the book of Mark and I encourage you to, this year, 2020, let's begin to read one book at a time and reading yes. through the different books. Mm -hmm. You know, just since uh, the beginning of December, I've been reading uh, John mm -hmm. and um, Matthew mm -hmm. and Luke. Now I'm in Mark. But this morning in my reading in uh, Mark chapter 4, I found a really cool revelation in God's word concerning prayer. And I really want to bring this to you uh, before we start to discuss what we're going to be praying uh, today and uh, the concentration of our prayer and focus. So if you have your Bible, you might open it up to Mark. In, in Mark chapter 4 and in verse 26, there's another parable uh, that Jesus gives. Anything in red we know is Jesus speaking and our ear, ears perk up to this. Amen. And so it says here the parable of the growing seed. And this is very powerful. And he says, uh, the kingdom of God is if a man should scatter seed on the ground and should sleep by night and rise by day and the seed should sprout and grow. He himself does not know how. For the earth yields the crop by itself. First the blade then the head, after that the full grain in the head. But when the grain ripens, immediately he puts in his sickle because the harvest has come. And this morning as I was reading that, it became very obvious to me that this also is applied to prayer. Mm -hmm. For example, the kingdom of God is if a man should scatter seed on the ground and should sleep by night and rise by day and the seed should spread, sprout and grow, he himself does not know how. And that's how I look at prayer and fasting. So this word this morning is to encourage you. Uh, when we take the word of God and we scatter it through prayer, then the seed becomes active and it grows. And we who are praying, we don't know how it works. We just know that praying God's word works. Yeah. And it says, and the seed began to sprout and began to grow. And he himself, the one who scattered, uh, did not know how. And we pray and we pray the word and we pray from our heart. And I'll tell you, we don't know how it all works. We just know it does. And then it says here, very interesting, it says the yield, uh, the earth yields the crop by itself. 
by itself. The word will yield the crop by itself. Uh, it's not something we do. What we do is pray. We scatter the seed and then the seed begins to operate and grow. And, you know, the Bible does tell us that the word of God will not return void or empty, but it's going to accomplish that for which it's sent. Mm -hmm. And we send it by scattering it in prayer. Then it begins to work, mm -hmm. right? And it says the earth uh, yields crops by itself, first the blade, then the head, after the full grain in the head. So it's a process. And even yesterday, someone came to see me and they said, why is it that my prayers don't seem to be answered very quickly? And I said, well, it's just like this parable. You have to understand that you put your word out there, you put the seed out there, but then there's a process of time. There's, uh, there's uh, God's working time, working in the hearts and the lives of people. And Pastor George has preached this many times. It's God's working time. Then it's Satan's fighting time. We have an enemy, and that enemy is fighting. He doesn't want your relatives to be saved. He doesn't want you to come out of financial bondage. He doesn't want our churches to grow. He, he wants turmoil. He wants trouble within the nations. That's his thing. He's the one who comes to steal, kill, and destroy. So we know that there's Satan's fighting time, but after that, there's our standing time. And we have to stand on the word and believe in faith that God is working. Mm -hmm. In fact, there's a song, isn't there, that says God is always working. Yeah. Even when we don't realize he's working, he's still working. Amen. And so this parable is very powerful. It shows that there's uh, patience that are needed in our prayers. So don't lose faith in your prayers. No matter how long you've been praying for that family member to be saved, no matter how long you've been praying to have a child or whatever it might be, Let's have faith. Let's stand in faith. Let's be patient and let the seed do its work. Amen. And I think this is, I see a lot of hearts and stuff coming up on the screen because you're relating to this. Because all of us, we just, oh, I tell you, sometimes you're praying for something, especially when my husband, for example, was unsaved. I was praying for him. And I tell you, there were many days I felt like losing my patience and, and losing my faith. You know, because things in the natural didn't look like anything was happening. But it is happening and that seed is growing and it's sprouting and it's bringing forth after its kind. So please remember that. And then it goes on and says, and when the grain ripens, now this is the manifestation time, right? Immediately we put in the sickle because the harvest has come. So immediately... Uh, after the seed of God's word has had a time to do its work and it begins to grow and it begins to uh, sprout and then we see the corn coming forth, the full corn in the ear. When we see this happening, then we see the manifestation of our prayer. Yes. Then we put in the sickle and we take in the harvest. Mm -hmm. And then whether it be the salvation of a loved one, whether it be uh, church growth, and of course there are things we have to do also um, you know, you can't live like the devil and expect God uh, to come through for you, right? You have to get right with God. You resist the devil and he will flee from you. And then you put your faith in God and then God comes through for you. Mm -hmm. So there's a definite process here. And so uh, Mark chapter 4 and verse 26 reading down to 29 is an awesome, awesome scripture that helps us to understand the process of prayer. Mm -hmm. And so... Uh, today, I really want you to be encouraged to keep putting forth the word. That's why I love praying God's word, because I'm not praying my own thoughts. I'm praying his word, and I know his word is as powerful coming out of my mouth as it is out of his mouth. Why? Mm -hmm. Because it's his words. It's mm -hmm. only a mouth. A mouth is nothing, but the word is everything. Yes. Amen? So the word's coming out, and it's uh, performing great things. Amen? And so be encouraged this morning. Hold fast to your faith. Don't be discouraged even in your fasting. Mm -hmm. Your fasting makes a difference. Yeah. God sees you in private. He knows what you're doing and he rewards you openly. Yeah. That's what the word of God says, Matthew chapter 6. But today, Sam, I think we want to pray for families. Yeah. Amen? Amen? Because there's a lot of problems in families. And I know, uh, Sam, for yourself, 
uh, you have some close family that you'd like to pray for this morning? Yeah, yeah. Who are they? Yeah, well, we have uh, family members who aren't saved, but like uh, Dr. Hazel was saying earlier on, families with uh, kind of teenagers and kind of like the next generation, as some people would say, mm -hmm. kind of like the thing that's happening in today's society that I see when I pre pray for people my age is fear. Fear mm -hmm. is gripping the next generation. And it is something that is stopping the next generation from moving forwards. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, and the thing that really helped me from moving forwards from being gripped by fear was having a spiritual father, was mm -hmm. having spiritual moms and dads in the church and having those mentors within my life. And, uh, you know, it's good to have a great pastor to go to. But then when you can have people yeah. in the church who are great mentors with you and who will stand by you and who will turn around and say, you know, there's this book I know and it's praying God's word. Why don't you read it? Mm -hmm. and, um, and people like that who encourage you to pray God's word, to stand on his word. And that so, really helps. So that's good for us to hear what a young person has to say, mm -hmm. because then we know better how to pray for our young people yes. and how to respond to our young people. Now, Sam is from a single parent home. And so uh, his dad is not around. So therefore, he does need male mentors mm -hmm. in his life. His mother is a pastor, mm -hmm. and she's doing a wonderful job. Yes. And it's great to have a mother. But boys need a male in their life. Yes. And we see that with the Apostle Paul, mm -hmm. uh, you know, how he was a mentor and a father uh, to Timothy. Otherwise, if you look at Timothy, he had the female influence so much that he became a very timid yeah. young man. And it took the father heart of Paul yeah. to come along and say, come on, Timothy, God hasn't given you a spirit of fear, but of love and of power and a sound mind. Yeah. So you see that. You see that male influence into a young man's life, and we need to see that. And the same for girls, you know, their um, mums and their dads. Or if you don't have both, no problem. There should be enough mentors in the church and, um, you know, uh, through your family that can mentor your children, your young people. Now, Sam said something very interesting there. He said that the young people are fearful. Mm -hmm. Now, Sam, explain that. Why, are, why do you feel young people are fearful? Well, I think the one thing of young people of today is they want to know what to belong to. They want to know what their purpose is. And, um, and that then, if they don't know what their purpose is, then they don't know what to step into next. So then they become very fearful and afraid of what is the next thing for them. And um, that was the one thing that Dr. George told me once when we were sitting for lunch was that young people, they want to belong to something. They want to have a purpose. And, um, and I think if we as a church can surround them in love and show them what God says about them and show them their identity in Christ mm -hmm. and show them that, you know, they don't have to be labeled by the world that they can be a child of God, that they can be a victor instead of being a victim of this world. And then for me, I think it's the fear of stepping forwards and not knowing what's the next step. And, mm -hmm. uh, and it's the fear of not having somebody alongside you on that journey. Yeah, that's really, really good because young people need a sense of belonging, yeah. don't they? They need to belong. Therefore, the church has a big obligation to make sure that their young people feel loved and accepted by everybody. Amen. They really do, not looking at what they wear and all the rest of the stuff yeah. that teenagers go through, but loving them through it all. And then the other thing, they need a, a sense of confidence. Yeah. You know, you can do it. And that's what we say to you, Sam. Uh, Sam is in Canada and he's here on a mentoring program yeah. uh, for three months and then he'll be going back to, Canada, to England uh, to work in his church. Mm -hmm. uh, but... We continually tell Sam, you can do this, Sam. Yes. You can do this. Yeah. And kids need to know that. They need to know that they can do it. Yeah. A sense of competence, a sense of self-worth. Mm -hmm. You're worth something. Yeah. You're worth something. And, uh, boy, I'll tell you what, those three things, it will bring those into line, and that will really help our young people. Amen? Mm -hmm. So thanks, Sam, for that. And we mm -hmm. will certainly keep that in mind when we're praying for families. Yeah. We'll pray against fear and for yeah. hope. Yeah. and purpose and vision to enter the hearts of our young people. Amen? Amen. So, you know, there are many things we want to pray for for the family. So today we're dedicating to the family. We need to pray for husbands and wives. We need to pray for single uh, people who are believing to marry. Yes. Uh, we need to pray 
uh, for um, single family dwellings like it is with Sam. Uh, we need to pray for mentors uh, mm -hmm. for the young people uh, that maybe don't have a mum or a dad or whatever it might be. And um, we're going to pray a lot about that. We're going to pray for marriage. Uh, you know, the, the thing in marriage is trust. If trust is broken, then that's a foundation. And it's very hard to build where there is no trust. So trust can be rebuilt in marriages and love can be restored in marriages. But it's going to take us praying for those things, that the love uh, between a husband and wife will be so strong uh, that the enemy cannot break the bond. Amen. So we want to pray for that this morning. Also, our children, uh, the, the children of this generation are the ones that really grieve my heart because they are being put in some very vulnerable situations with this gender identity yeah. and all of this craziness that's going on in the world today. And if I could exhort parents, stand up parents, mm -hmm. stand up and stand against what the devil is trying to do uh, to your children, amen? Know what they're being taught at school. Uh, don't be uh, timid. Go in love, but go to the schools and make sure you know what's happening and what's what kind of things are being put into the heart of your child, amen? Now, as far as gender, uh, gender identity is concerned, God gave us gender and we have our identity in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. And I think that this is an important thing for us to pray for. Uh, also to make sure that our children know their identity yeah. in Christ. Don't let the world give them their identity. Don't let the world step in and tell them what their identity is or what their gender is. Let's believe God and God knows what he's doing. Amen. Amen. So we're really going to pray for that. Uh, I want to thank everybody that's online. I see a lot of people online this morning. Uh, Sam, you see this here. And uh, a lot of pastors uh, are online here this morning and they're listening. Because, you know, pastors have a huge job to be able to help the parents, to be able to bring up their children in the admonition of the Lord. They have a big responsibility to make sure they've got good prayer groups in their churches. And those prayer groups are to pray people through their hard and their difficult times. So this morning, the scripture we read was from Mark, Book of Mark, Chapter 4, for those of you that are just joining us. And I read the parable of the growing seed this morning. And uh, that parable is very important because it helps us to know how prayer works. Amen. Don't lose your faith. Don't become... Don't come to the place where you don't have faith anymore. Yeah. You hold on to your faith and you will see the harvest. You will see the manifestation of God's word. Mm -hmm. It may not be exactly what you wanted, but you know what? God, God's choice is always the best. Amen. Mm -hmm. So whatever he chooses, that's what we want. And his word certainly gives us direction. Amen. So Sam, this morning we're going to pray. I'm going to get you to pray, especially for young people. Yeah. And I'm going to pray for the families mm -hmm. and just as God leads us. Yeah. And everybody that's watching us, if I could uh, encourage you to pray with us now. Mm -hmm. uh, in your homes, wherever you might be, in your car, wherever you might be, let's pray together and let's believe for yes. God to work miracles in our prayers this morning. Yeah. You pray as God leads you. And we will pray as God leads us, and together we're united in prayer. Amen. There's a few hundred of a few hundred of us praying this morning, right here on this live stream. So that's uh, no shortage of power. Yeah. We have enough power to move mountains this morning Amen. between us. Amen. Uh, one can chase a thousand, two can chase ten thousand. So let's get on with this, and let's pray for families today mm -hmm. during the day as we finish the broadcast. Continue to uplift yeah. families, your own family, yes, and include others as well. Amen. Mm -hmm. So let's pray this morning. Yeah. Thank you. Father, we praise you and we worship you this morning. And we thank you, Father God, for your word, which never returns void, always yeah. accomplishing 
Lord, what you send it for. And Father, we send your word this morning on behalf of families. And we say that families can be like heaven upon the earth. Mm -hmm. Father God, we know that there can be love, there can be peace. And there can be joy in our families yes. if we follow your word, if we commit ourselves, Father God, to your word and to being a doer of mm -hmm. your word. Father, I just pray for husbands and wives now. I pray for the knitting together yes. of their hearts, Father God, that cords of love can never be broken mm -hmm. and that families will remain whole in Jesus' name. And for those who are single, single families, yes. uh, Father God, I pray for these single moms and their single dads. I pray Pray for them, Father God, that you will be a father to the fatherless yes. and you will help them, Father God, to be able to bring up their children in the admonition of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Father, cause our churches to be so family-oriented that there are mentors and there are counsellors who will come together and they will help to mentor and counsel our young people mm -hmm. who maybe don't have a father or don't have a mother. Help us, Lord, to be your hands extended uh, to this younger yes. generation in Jesus' mighty name, in Jesus' yes. name. You yeah. pray, Sam. Pray yeah, for Father, the young people. Father God, I just thank you for the next generation that's arising within this world, Father God. And Father God, I thank you that this would just encourage the church to rise up with this next generation as well. And Father God, I thank you that there would be a spirit of encouragement upon our generation, that there would be not a discouragement, but an encouragement in your word, in your spirit. I thank you, Father God, that your spirit is upon us, that your spirit is upon us so that we can break the bondage that is on our generation. And Father God, I thank you that there'd be a spirit of love, it'd be a spirit of sound minds and of, of power, Lord, upon our generation, Lord. And Father God, I thank you for all the, the wise men and women within our churches, Lord that you would just begin to rise them up within our local churches, Lord, that they would come alongside our generation, come alongside us, Lord, that they would just stand next to us and encourage us and hold us up, Lord, like when Moses' arms got tired, Lord, and they held him up. Father God, I just pray that that would be an encouragement to the people in the church, Lord, of today, that yes. they'd come alongside Thank this you. generation, Thank that they'd make the decision today, now, this is the time to come alongside our generation and hold them up in prayer and encouragement. Yes. Yes, and Father, if there be one, Father God, whether it be a, a mom or a dad, Father God, or a young person that might be suffering depression and oppression, yes. Father God, we come against these things right now in the name of Jesus. Yes. We bind depression. We bind anxiety. Yes, Father, Father God, we bind these things in the name mm. of Jesus and we put them under the feet of the church today yes. in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you that we can rely on you, that we can rest on you, yes. that depression, Father God, has to flee mm. in Jesus' name and the joy of the Lord will be our strength. Mm. We will rejoice not because of the circumstance we're going through, but we'll rejoice because our names are written in the Amen. book of life. And for that, Lord, we are eternally grateful to even I think that we might live with you for eternity yes. is enough to bring joy into mm. our hearts and lives, Father God. And Father, where anxiety is concerned, mm. Father, we just trust you. We just put our hands in your hands and we just trust you. We may not yes. know everything. We may not know how you're working and what you're doing. But Father God, we do know that we can trust your heart mm -hmm. and your heart is to always do us good. good. Always do our children good. Always do our husband, our wife. My, always do us good and we know yes. that. And so this morning we are elated with the joy of the Lord mm -hmm. because our names are written in the book of life. And for that, we are exceedingly glad, yes. Father God, in Jesus' mighty name. Yes. And today, Father, help us to walk out today mm -hmm. in our prayer and fasting. Help us to walk out this day in faith, believing that like the seeds, the seeds scattered upon the mm -hmm. ground, that our words that we've spoken today are going out and they're working. And yes. Father God, we will stand in faith and we will receive that harvest, that multiplication, Father mm -hmm. God, of the blessing that you have in store for each and every one of us, Father God. The harvest shall come yes. in Jesus' name. Amen. Send forth the rain. Send Amen. forth the rain, Father God. Send forth the spiritual rain Amen. upon our churches and upon our lives, Father God, in Jesus' name. Amen. And for that we are eternally grateful yes. in jesus mighty mighty name yes. we thank you for that this morning father god yes. in jesus name in jesus yes. name yes. amen amen, amen.
Mm -hmm. Amen. Well, let's uh, remember this today, that we're praying for families today, the whole day, praying for young people, praying mm -hmm. for marriages, praying mm -hmm. for uh, children. We're praying against this uh, gender identity thing, mm -hmm. and we're going to watch over our children, and we'll make sure that the poison of this world will not enter into their hearts mm -hmm. in Jesus' name. We're praying and we're also reading the book of Mark this mm -hmm. month and I'm on chapter four. So tomorrow I'll be on chapter five. Now our broadcast for the fasting and prayer time is Monday to Friday. So Saturday you have a day where you just really uh, use that day between you and the Lord. And then on Sunday, of course, you have church. And you know what? I really encourage you to go to church. Yes. Right? Everyone needs a good local mm -hmm. church. You can be offended anywhere. And you can be offended in church. There's no question about that. Uh, but let's not let that offense keep us away uh, from the corporate worship and from the word. So God bless you. Have a great day on Sunday. And uh, we'll see you again on Monday morning. And we'll be back at 9 o'clock Monday morning, Alberta time. And I'll have another guest with you because our Samuel, he's going to be going to one of our churches for more mentoring yeah. uh, this month. So we'll be saying goodbye to Sam. He's going to a church in Calgary and uh, actually Royal Oak, you're going to be going there and he'll be mentored there for the month and then he'll be coming back to England with us at the end of the month. And don't forget, we are going to Israel and if you're interested in going to Israel April 20th to the 30th, it's going to be a great time for us to walk where Jesus walked mm -hmm. and to be able to read the scriptures and understand the Bible like never before. You know what? I have a real love for each and every one of you. I see your names coming up on the screen and mm -hmm. my heart just goes out. I see people from Thailand. I see yeah. people from Canada. I even see uh, Pastor um, uh, Esther from um, Malaysia. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I see so many of you here from different mm -hmm. places, including our beloved Canada and the United States. Yeah, we see you and yeah. we know that you're with us and we are certainly with you. Amen. We love you all. God bless. Remember today, family. Amen. Amen. God bless. And thank you so much for being with us. We'll see you on Monday.